So, however, <clears throat> first thing, again, whenever I'm given a problem, anytime I'm given the values of a triangle, I don't care what the triangle looks like unless they tell me what the triangle looks like. I am just going to create a triangle. A, B, C. Does everybody follow me? I like doing it this way because one, it's very easy for me to be able to identify if it's angle to side angle, side to side angle, and so forth. So in this case, I have A is 43, B is 35 degrees, and C is 19. So therefore, this is an example of side angle side. Okay, And what you guys notice for side angle side, we can't do the law of sines for side angle side, right? To do the law of cosine, to do the law of sines, you have to have the ratio. You have to have a ratio of an angle and its side length. But here, Carlo, we don't have a ratio going on at all, do we? No. no. So what Kaylee would look to do is what we did a lot of times when we had angle side angle is that we found the missing side lengths of the, ang of the rest of the triangle. But we only have one angle. We don't even have enough information to do that. So therefore, we're going to use the law of cosines. Now, I'm going to show you, again, you'll be provided the law of cosines. There is one example of it. But you're going to want to use the law of cosines where you're dealing with the angle is what you're dealing with. So the law of cosines dealing with angle B looks like this. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C times the cosine of B. Does everybody see how I basically got that formula from that formula? I just rewrote terms around. And if you guys, you guys could look in your book. I mean, they'll, they'll be, I think all the cosines on your formula sheet will be given to you. But all I did was just swapped. All I did was swap A and B. Wherever there was an A up there, I replaced it with the B. Wherever there was a B, I replaced it with an A. That's all I did. I just swapped the A's and the B's. Does everybody see that? So there's technically three cosine formulas law of cosine formulas, but in reality, there's really only one. It's just a relationship of A, B, and C that you change around. So now we have some information. Let's just plug in what we know. We do not know B squared. Um, A, we know, is 43. Ooh, this is going to be some big numbers. Plus C, which is 19, uh, minus. 2 times A times C times the cosine of B. So does everybody see how I just plugged everything in? Does everybody see that? That was it, Sam. It's really that hard. That's really the hard part about it, plugging it in. However, I will say that's not where my students make their mistakes. Students make their mistakes using the rules of um, order of operations. So the best thing advice I would do, rather than trying to do things quickly in your head, my best piece of advice would just be doing things step by step. It takes you a little bit longer, but this is a great way to avoid mistakes. So let's just do 43 squared. 43 squared is 1,849 plus 19 squared, 361. Minus 2 times 43 times 19 is 1,634 times the cosine of 35 degrees. What everybody wants to do, and this is the number one mistake that students make, is they subtract the 361 from the 1634. You can't do that. And the reason being is, watch this, 5 minus 3x. Everybody, I believe, understands that 5 minus 3x does not equal 2x. You can't subtract the 5 and the 3, right? Because the 3 is being multiplied by the x. So you can't do that. The same thing happens here. This 1,634 is being multiplied by cosine of 35. So you can't subtract the numbers. Does that make sense? OK. Uh, well, what I do is I'll, I add these up first. So I do 18, 49, plus 361. So I have b squared is equal to 22, 10, and then minus 1634 cosine of 35. So yeah, what I do is I simplify this first, and then I subtract it from that. Because remember, this is going to give you a decimal, an irrational decimal. So I do b squared equals 2210 minus your answer. 
So what I do is 1634 times the cosine of 35. Then I do 2210, 2210 minus my last answer, which was this, and I get 871.5. I'm sorry? OK. Now, you could use type in the answer or so forth. But again, I don't want to retype on all those numbers. So now, to solve for this, I take the square root. Yes? Why don't you just from this? So because remember, you can't do 5 minus 3x. You can't do 5 minus 3, right? That's all right. That's all right. I'm telling you, it's the most common mistake. Happens every year. Um, so you take the square root on both sides. And I'm just going to leave this answer in my calculator, though. So I'm just going to do the square root of my last answer. And I get 29.52. Now I will go ahead and round it. Since it's a side length, I'm going to round it to the 10th. I will tell you how I want you to round in this class. Um, and usually your answers will, or your test will as well. So I'd like you to round this to 29.5. Now we have a ratio. And now that we have a ratio, we can either use the law of cosines again, or you could use the law of sines. However, if me, personally, I prefer to use the law of sines. It's much quicker, much faster, and so forth. Law of cosines, though, what's nice about the law of cosines is there's no ambiguous case for the law of cosines. So you don't have to worry about that. You just do the law of cosines, and you're good. However, for the law of sines, we do have that ambiguous case, right? So there's kind of two traps. Here's how you avoid the ambiguous case. Um, what you do is, so again, let's go back to my question. I said you can only have one obtuse angle in a triangle, correct? One obtuse angle. Everybody agrees with me? Yes. yes. OK. So if I can determine which of my angles, so I have two open angles, A and C, correct? I want to determine which angle is going to be the smaller of the two angles. Because if it's the smaller of the two angles, because remember, think about the ambiguous case. Remember the ambiguous case either talks about a acute angle or an obtuse angle, right? It's either one or the other, correct? Well, the, um, the ambiguous case is either the acute or obtuse. So if I can figure out which angle is only going to be acute, meaning it has to be smaller than the other angle, then there's no way it can be obtuse. Because if it's the smaller angle and it's obtuse, well, then the other angle is larger. That would also have to be obtuse, but that would counteract having two obtuse angles. So what we need to do is look at these two angles, A and C. Which of these two angles, based on their side lengths across from them, has to be smaller than the other? C has, than C has to be smaller than A, right? Because the opposing side length is much smaller. Does everybody agree with me? So guess what? That's what we're going to use the law of sines for. Okay? If you do law of sines for A, you, you would run into the ambiguous case, or you could run into the ambiguous case, which would cause a problem for you. So we're going to use now, use the law of sines with angle C. Yep. You know C is smaller than A. The ambiguous case either gives you an acute angle or an obtuse angle. So if the smaller angle is acute, right? And let's say it is the ambiguous case. Let's say it's acute or obtuse. If the smaller angle is obtuse, that means the larger angle is also obtuse. You can't have more than one obtuse angle in a triangle. So if you always pick the smaller angle, you won't run into two cases. Well, you could use law of cosines. You have, two, you have two missing angles. If you want to do law of cosines again, there's no problem with that. Do it. I just personally like to do law of sines. Oh, so I'm going to do it. So yeah, you could do law of cosines again. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. And if you like that, it makes sense. Angle, 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 side, or side, side, angle. But look what I have here. Again, uh, in, in reality, in law of science, all you need is to have a ratio. You need to have 29 over 5 over 
the sine of 35 degrees is equal to 19 over the sine of C. All you need to do to do your law of sines is have one ratio, right? So I go ahead and do this. I solve real quick. Sine of C is going to equal to 19 times the sine of 35 degrees all over 29.5. Again, I'm doing this solving very quickly. So therefore, I just do 19 times the sine of 35 divided by 29.5, and I get 0.3694. Do inverse. So. So I do sine inverse of that answer, and I get 21.6. So C equals 22 degrees. I'll round to the whole number. So if I know what B is, I know what C is, can I figure out what A is? Yeah. Right. So A is going to equal 180 minus 22 minus 35. One twenty-three. And there you go, done. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, or what I'm trying to show you,